Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to make another little one sheet project. Uh, well, there's minimal waste on this. Uh, it is a little folio and I'll go ahead and show it you. It fastens with Velcro dot. Inside we've got a couple of little pockets here. And we've got this little, it's my take on a little waterfall. Doodad, waterfall doodad, yeah. If you're familiar with waterfall, yeah, waterfall, waterfall lots, yeah. Waterfall booklets, folios. You tend to find all the waterfall pieces are like this. They come up from the top, yeah. So you, then we'd have two more. But I decided I wanted some coming from top and some coming from bottom, so that they fold in on each other like that. And then it fastens a little bit like a policy envelope. I mean, you could use a button string closure there. We've got a town. Uh, this is just your bare bones, your basic folio. You can put extra flips, flaps, pockets, anything you want. You're obviously going to want to decorate it. But I just wanted to show you the basic little folio today. Now, you can make this from letter size or A4 size. There'll just come a point where we make a slightly different cut. And I'll explain that as we go along. So, I'm going to grab my A4 sheet of cardstock and we're going to start to score. All the scoring gets done together in one go, so we don't have to do separate little bits of scoring on each waterfall piece. It all gets done at once and then it's all in the cutting. Right, so we're going to start and we're going to score at three inches all the way down. Then score again at three and a quarter inches. Oops, I don't know why I nearly scored wrong then. Then we're going to score at six and a half inches, six and a quarter, sorry, six and a quarter inches, and then six and a half inches. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I will put these measurements up on screen. Then we're going to score at nine and a half inches, and again at nine and three quarter inches. I'm just doing it in inches. I'm not converting this to centimeters because as you know with this, they never convert exactly and things end up out. Plus my big scoreboard doesn't do centimeters. So I'm old school on this. Right, so that's your scoring done. We can do away with the scoreboard now. Right, at this point we're gonna do a a slightly different cut depending on where we live so if we are European and we live in the UK or anywhere else I think Australia you use A4 don't you well A4 measures is it 11 it's about 11 and three quarter ish well US letter size is only 11 so we're going to cut this down to 11 inches and we want to cut it off this side well, we've got that smaller piece. So pop it in your trimmer, pop it to 11 inches and cut a sliver off. So then you've got that to do with what you will. Yeah, if you were going to make a button string closure on inside, you could make your buttons out of it. Yeah, you can do what you want with that. Go to town with it. Right, if you live in the US, you'd have a piece of paper that's 11 inches that way but then yours would be eight and a half that way wouldn't it well a4 is only eight and a quarter so what i want you to do is put yours in your trimmer and cut it down to eight and a quarter yeah so you'll be cutting a much smaller sliver off so you won't have as much waste as us i suggest you put yours in the bin yeah, cut it down to eight and a quarter. So then we're all working with the exact same size piece of cardstock, which is 11 inches by eight and a quarter. Yeah. So there we go. Right. And once we've done that, the next thing you need to do is we need to cut a piece off of this lengthways that measures two and seven eighths of an inch. Yeah. So two and seven eighths. I can't say it, two and seven eighths. Cut. Yeah, so there we go. Right, I'm going to get rid of that big chompy chopper now because it's awkward. And I'm going to bring my little user friendly one in now. Right, we're now going to cut this up. 
So this is where we're going to make our waterfall pieces. So that's going to be a piece that flips up and that's going to be the little hinge, yeah? So we need to cut that piece off with its hinge. So we're going to cut there on that second score line, yeah? And we're going to do that on each one, yeah? This tiny bit's going to be the little pocket for the inside cover. So we're going to go along cutting them off. So that's one, two, I'm counting again, can't help it, three. So we've now got our three waterfall pieces. Now you'll notice I used four, didn't I? So this is where we're going to get our fourth from. We're going to cut that end wide section off. We want to cut that off and the hinge piece. So chop that off, that is now our body of the folio and we're left with this. Oops, I think I've, I cut a bit too much off that, it's because I can't see very well. So my folio is going to be a smidgen short, oh well, you didn't see that. Right, we then want to cut a piece off that that is two and seven eighths of an inch wide. And that will be our final piece waterfall piece so we have four of those now that measure two and seven eighths of an inch wide yeah that's our tiny pocket now this bit we're going to get rid of that hinge piece cut it off all together and that will be our larger pocket so that's that all right now we can put the chopper away we've done with chopper Next thing we need to do, if you want to round your corners, which I do, because I've decided all corners are offensive, and I'm using my quarter of an inch corner rounder. I've rounded the bottom two on the inside cover pockets. You don't really need to do both, just the just the outer one would have done, but hey ho. I'm rounding the bottom or the top, depending on which way you look at it, of each waterfall piece. 20 those they get everywhere so I'm doing all four of those <laughs> why can't I pick that up come here you thing and then I'm going to do all four corners on the cover this would look lovely decorated in some botanical book pages or just collage, or even just stamped. After all four, I thought that had five corners then. <laughs> no. But I'm just going to crease my little creasy cord, creasy spines. So that's our little book. It's quite cute. Right, next I'm going to grab my bone folder. and I'm going to fold these over. Crease. I find creasing this way around keeps them straighter. I've no idea why, it just seems to. You know, with the smaller part underneath. Maybe something to do with why I crease. I ain't got a clue. Right. So, now it's time to glue these on. Yep. Yeah. So they should fit if we've measured right, yeah. Oh look, we seem to have measured everything okay. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to use art glitter glue for this. It's my glue of choice. I just want to apply some to the hinge. You could use dry adhesive if you wanted to. It'd have to be pretty thin though. It's It was only a quarter in. I put a lot on there. That's going to be terrible. I'm just going to run my finger along it. <laughs> take some off. But I didn't really take much off there, did I? Take it off and wipe it on a baby wipe. Have you got one? No, I'm just going to wipe it on a bit of spare card then. Crafting for dummies. No, it's not for dummies, it's with dummies and the dummy sometimes. Right, let's pop that on. You get a smidgen of wiggle time with art glitter. But because we've rounded those car corners, you will find that if you don't line them up perfectly, it can be very forgiving. You won't see. That it's not lined up perfectly so that's that one i tend to do mine alternately i've no idea why i don't think it makes a difference 
that were a bit better with glue. Didn't go mad. I keep forgetting I've filled it up. And I don't need to squeeze the bottle as hard. So I'll just check they line up. That helps me straighten it. Then I'll do another one. I mean, you could put more in this. You could put as many as you wanted if you want to use more card. You know the measurement of them. But I'm just into trying to not make scraps at the moment. I've got so many scraps. I mean, I'm doing all these projects using up scraps. And I've got to be honest, sometimes even though I'm doing projects that use up scraps, I'm making as many scraps as I'm using. I'm just a scrap monster. I think plenty of you will know exactly how that is. And then this last one. So you just butt that up to that edge. We'll get an to turn it that way to look and see if it's straighty. There we go. So we've got our four pieces, that's lovely. Now at this point, make sure if you want that on the right hand side, make sure you've got it the right way around. I'll just let that set before I put the Velcro on and I will glue these pockets in. So we've got one there. Yep, that's going to fit. If you want to put a thumb notch in these, go ahead and do it. I personally didn't want to. I go on and off thumb notches, I've no idea why. Sometimes I want them, sometimes I don't. Ooh, <laughs> come back. So that's that. And like I said, you can put more of the pockets than this if you want. I'm just using the card from this. I mean, so far that's my waist there. I'm quite happy with that. Not too wasteful at all. And then this little pocket. Again, this is another project that could be nice for giving a gift in, if you're giving gift cards or even cash. I've had quite a few people say they're ideal for kids and grandkids for Christmas. Right, oh, now for the Velcro dots. I like to use for these projects, I like to use the Velcro branded ones. And you know I'm very frugal, so if I recommended something branded, <laughs> you know there's a reason. Right, I've got a hooky one and a fluffy one, as I call them. So, duh, duh. <laughs> bottom, top, bottom, top. There you go. And get it quite near the edge, because there's not a lot of overlap. And I put the fluffy one there, on the top, and then... Put the hooks of the hooky one to it. I didn't put that one very good, did I? I didn't line that up right well. And then close it. Don't open that straight away. Give the glue time to set. And I'm going to close that up. And then I'm going to put my Velcro on there. Yeah, I do have these linked on my Amazon store from... Are they called the thin fast? They're called thin fasteners. Yeah. Rather than Velcro dots. Search Velcro dots, you'll get a load of uh, the generic ones come up and they're quite thick. They don't, they're not very low profile. These are just very low profile and I love them for my journaling projects. Right, so make sure you like how it is before you press it down. There we go. So that's it. And I'll have a matching pair. So I'll show you inside this one again now. I'm going to let the glue set on that. So we've got a little folio with a waterfall insert that you can use for journaling. You can use it for photographs. You can use it for stashing money in for your loved ones. However you want to use it. So there we go. I will put all measurements on the screen and in the description box. 
so thank you very much for joining me i really hope you enjoyed that if you did make sure you hit the like button thank you very much and i'll see you next time bye